All right, so can the normal model be used to describe the distribution and the mean of the pair differences? And let's check the conditions. Um, so first off, um, we were told from the beginning of this problem that this was a random sample from less than 10%. So yes, we can assume independence. As for normality, uh, the histogram is definitely skewed, but the sample size is more than 60. So recall that the larger the sample size, the less the uh, the more the less you care about skewness. In this case, when your sample size is at least 60, you can get by with a lot of skewness, and that's the case here. Now, is there statistical evidence of a difference in the textbook prices between UCLA and Amazon? So I'll set the hypotheses and then let's do a hypothesis test. So for all these tests, we're going to have the same hypotheses, essentially that the mean of the pair differences is equal to zero, or the mean of the pair differences is not equal to zero. And by pair difference, differences, I mean the differences in textbook prices between UCLA and Amazon. Now, we were told the point estimate is 12.76, and the standard error you can find by taking a standard deviation, divide by the square root of the sample size, in this case, it comes out to be 1.67. The test statistic would be the point estimate, 12.76, divided by the standard error, 1.67. So, we can actually repeat that. Maybe. Um, whoops. 0.76 divided by um, 1.67. And there you go. You get test statistic is 7.64. And generally when the test statistic starts getting larger than 2 or below negative 2, you know, larger than those, uh, that would be an indication that you're going to reject. So it's pretty safe bet at this point we're going to reject. To compute the p-value, go to the VARs, choose to TCDF, that's option 6. And then I'll type in seven, the test statistic, 7.65999. Uh, the sample size was 73, so degrees of freedom would be 72. Paste, and then times 2. And you see the p-value, uh, 6.89e-11. That's a very tiny p-value. So degrees of freedom, 72. P-value, it's less than 0.001. So we would reject a no hypothesis. Based on the point estimate, there is evidence that the textbooks are cheaper on Amazon on average. Now, if I want to do a 95% confidence interval for the average price, uh, let's see. Point estimate would be 12.76. And again, the standard error is 1.67. Uh, degrees of freedom was 72. So if I want to do a 95% confidence interval, I would pull up my t-distribution table. Um, so you're follow 95, page 8. Okay. So I look there is 1.99 for 70 degrees and 1.99 for 80 degrees. So 1.99 for 72 degrees as well. So the 95% confidence coefficient is 1.99. The confidence interval is done by point estimate plus or minus the confidence coefficient times the standard error. So 12.76 plus or minus 1.99 times 1.67. And you see that gives me a confidence interval between 944 and 1608. Now, since this was defined between UCLA minus Amazon, the fact that both these numbers are positive tells me that UCLA is more expensive on average by an average of 944 to $16 per book. So we are 95% confident that the average textbook is 944 to 1608 more expensive at UCLA than in Amazon. All right. What if we had different confidence intervals? So if the answer, uh, so back up, we end up with numbers that were both positive. That means the null value of zero is to the left, is below those numbers. So that's the same thing as rejecting. Um, so if I had 944 to 1608, 
we would je reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence that UCLA is more expensive. If the numbers were both negative, on the other hand, like negative 16.08 to negative 944, well, since this was UCLA minus Amazon, negative numbers would mean Amazon was more expensive. So if this happened to be our interval, then the, we would have rejected. That would have been evidence that Amazon is more expensive. On the other hand, if we went from like negative 944 to positive 1608, the number zero would be inside there. So the null hypothesis is plausible and we would fail to reject. There is no F if this was my interval, there would be no evidence that prices at UCLA and Amazon are different on average. Okay. Well, if we try one more example, do you think your pulse rate is higher when you're making a quit taking a quiz in your than when you're sitting in a lecture? The data below show, po shows pulse rates collected on from 10 students in a class lecture and then from the same students. Uh, that same here, that's kind of a key word that means that we're doing with paired data. Um, and it's during their quiz. So let's construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference in class um, lecture and taking a quiz. And you see the results. Um, here are the results for the mean, for the mean and deviation for quizzes, for lectures, and for the paired differences. Okay. So it's the paired differences in the sample size of 10 that really that matters to us. So the point estimate is that 2.7, 2.7. Standard error, if you do 9.9 .9 divided by the square root of the sample size, that comes out to be 3.13. Degrees of freedom is 9. And if we want to do a 95% conf confidence interval, then I would go 95% um, for 9, I get 2.26. So 95% confidence coefficient is 2.26. From there, 95% confidence interval, point estimate, plus or minus confidence coefficient times standard error. I get from negative 4.37 to positive 9.77. In this case, the number zero is inside of it. That tells me it's plausible that there's no difference. This would be the same thing as failing to reject. So based on this study, there's no evidence that the heart rates are different for quiz or lecture. So there's no evidence that pulse rate is different between a class lecture or taking a quiz.